Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The one and only thing you can give to God is praise. He has done all things well. Only God can do all things well. Anything you do is inadequate. As a man, your prayer is inadequate. Your giving is inadequate. Only the perfect God can do all things well. The one thing you can give to God is your praise. God is endlessly attracted to praise. His blessing upon our life demands that he receives a response of praise from us. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach. So his blessing upon our life demands that he receives a response of praise from us. He is endlessly attracted to praise. In praise, we provoke his presence to do the humanly impossible. <laughs> praise is a vital force in the life of the believer. Praise waited for thee, O God, in Zion. Unto thee shall devour be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Psalm 65, verse 1 and 2. Lord, we praise you. And we thank you. Today shall be your day. You will live here this morning changed. Charged. And transformed. All by the word. An understanding of where you are has a lot to do with what you partake of that place. Uh, this is Woga. Amen. Assembly. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? This thing saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Amen is a person, Jesus Christ. You've heard the charge about revelation. That's him. Now, before you sit down, I want you to sit on Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. All the days of your life. That's the master key that will unlock your life of dominion. Ask for me. That means I don't have a problem. It's all about you. Make your choice. Concerning any issue, you settled. Ask for me. I'll be writing on this verse of scripture all the days of my life, sir. This is my covenant. Whatever thing you are face to face with, as for me. Brisaka <laughs> Kahu Bakuta. That's why I'm not choosing about places or whatever thing is coming my way. As for me, that means settled. Concerning any issue you come in here with today, you are returning with your package. Amen. That means line up with the covenant. As for me, this is my covenant with them, my spirit that is upon them, and my words which I have put in their mouth shall not depart out of their mouth, nor out of the mouth of their seed. Nor out of the mouth of their seed, seed. From henceforth and forever. Woo! That means nothing changes it. No matter what is coming your way. Sickness, lack, it can't change it, sir. Anywhere you just dominate with Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. Over your business, over the workers of your hand, 
over your children. It speaks from henceforth and forever. That's why when I open my mouth, nothing comes out of it except God's word. That's what you are trained to do here. Your mouth here shouldn't say any other thing other than God. It's a covenant too. Let me tell you why you must have God's word in your mouth. Each time you open your mouth to speak God's word, God hears himself, not you. That's what God is supposed to so whoever or whatever the issue is, God is responding to you. He doesn't look at your lifestyle. He's his word. Sit down. For the testimonies of deliverances rough in our midst, we give him praise. There shall be no evil report here in this assembly. All we shall be sharing here is good, good reports. All the days of our lives. As for me, that means if you don't line up with this covenant, you're on your own. A covenant is an agreement between two parties based on clearly defined terms that is ratified and seen by an oath and by the blood. So that means it's unbreakable, unforgettable. From henceforth and forever. My spirit that is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth. That means keep speaking the word. So it says, cool. By redemption, the spirit is no longer upon you, it's on your inside. He's the one that teaches you all things. So it's your school teacher. And the curriculum and syllabus is the word. That's why Jesus Christ is the head of the department of the body. The word. That means when you are going by my syllabus concerning any issue here on this world, you dominate. I'm approaching the syllabus everyone over my family. Makunata Aka Paku Kati Agades Nekama Kuta Liega. So the same spirit that put this universe together can put my own universe. Yes, sir. You can't play this covenant and be going after people. <laughs> this is not pride. This is heritage. He told me that Woga is a word station where you are injected with the spirited word. That's revelation that will make you begin to perform at peak efficiency. Going by Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. As for me, this is my covenant with thee. It doesn't matter where you are, it's not a matter of places, yes, it will change the weather to suit you and become conducive for your habitation wherever you are planted. And the earth was start form and then the word and the spirit created heaven. So you can create heaven where you are with the spirit of God and the word of God. The spirit of God is your class teacher. And the curriculum and syllabus is the word of God. That means Jesus is the head of the department which is the head of the body. You. 
and God the Father is the dean of faculty that prepares you to dominate here and then convocate at in heaven. That's your glorification. So you are dominating here and then at the end of it, eternal life with Christ. Preparing you for your convocation. That's your glorification. That's eternity with Christ. Please understand this. So you are a mobile classroom. The Holy Ghost teaching you and the syllabus is the word and Jesus Christ is the head of the department. How can you now say? Ask for me. But you know, every student that is running any course, he has to appear in the class, two of us. He has to do assignments. He has to read. But that's not what you are doing. That's why you are following people. Maku, Kara, Kapa, Kates. So he said, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself a proof. That study the syllabus and the curriculum. Big time. The semester is every day. The test is every day. So the day you don't read this book, you are not in class. The day you don't hear the Holy Ghost, you are not taught. You are missing classes, and so you will fail in your test. Bakata, kara, katus. Everything you see in this world is from here. After this service, you will miss your class. Amen. You don't have this book, go and buy this book. That's why I say, buy the truth. I have plenty of them, sir. Plenty. Plenty. That's the one thing I've been studying. All this and is putting everything on my table. That prepares the table before me, sir. Your table is so empty of the good things of life because you are not a student. You keep fooling after people. Your mouth is empty of God's word. As for me, that means if you line up with this, you don't have a problem. You and I will dominate the world. And at the end of it, you are appear for your convocation. Eternity with Christ, that's glorification. Hallelujah. Dominating here and at the end, eternity with Christ. Now, let me say it one more time, sir. Your dominion here is not automatic. You have to be a student of the world, you have to have God's word in your mouth, His spirit is already on your inside to be taught. Supernatural things are taught. The things that Jesus began both to do and teach. That's Jesus who, who is the head of the department. <laughs> He's the word that the syllabus. So I've been going through the syllabus every year. Revelation, Genesis, Revelation, every day. I'm so conversant. With the syllabus, the curriculum. And it's daily, sir. So any test that comes, because I don't miss classes. I don't miss teachings concerning all this. I begin to dominate barrenness. Dominate scarcity. Hallelujah. I dominated blindness, sir. When he taught me in the class, I was all alone Christmas Day. And he was teaching me. Taking on the world, right? I came with new eyeballs. I read this letter in the dark. October 24, I'll be 62. Covenant. As for me, it proved medical doctors wrong. 
Why you become a student of this school of the spirit, whatever negative pronouncement any person tells you, they will keep quiet because they will see the reverse of it. In your favor. Ask for me. I'll be in my room January, December in a class with the Holy Ghost. You won't miss anything outside. Everything becomes dung. When he's teaching you, you are in command wherever you are planted. When you come here, we point you to this school. Your dominion is not automatic. It is not transmitted by nature. Uh, like an inheritance. You must labor for it. Uh, the provisions of redemption in Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. What is Lamb that was slain to receive power? It's not automatic. Riches. It's not automatic. It's a covenant. As for me, this is my covenant with them. My spirit that is upon them are my words. Open your mouth. Whatever thing comes. It's tough except God's word. You can't dominate. That's how you'll be moving around looking for people who have God's word in their mouth. You'll be following them. You will never be free. Ask my family members. This word, when it is open, God's word. That is a covenant. And because he doesn't look at the person, it's his word in your mouth that he responds to. Hallelujah. There is nothing you will give God like giving him, let him hear himself. It's exciting. Everybody likes to hear himself. It's God's nature. So, God has put, that means your life is a table recorder for God. You invite God to you. Not by going after people, but by speaking his word. He responds. Let me say it one more time. Dominion or to partake of the provision of redemption is not automatic. It's available, but it's not automatic. You grow into it. You grow into power. You grow into riches. You grow into wisdom. You grow into strength. You grow into honor. You grow. Can I hear say grow? So computer chapter 3 verse 18. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory. Both now and forever. Grow in grace. You grow into power sir. You grow into riches. You grow into all the things that redemption has provided. Hallelujah. It's not automatic. Okay. Grow in knowledge. Mm. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And the child grew and was strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom. That's how to partake of the provision of redemption made available. I've been growing, sir. When I look at what others are having, you grow into it. 
when you see any person manifesting the provision of redemption in power reaches don't go and ask him to give you I will say okay, you grow into it and the child grew you just manifest it by growing take your responsibility to begin to grow now you you will <laughs> And the child grew. I like growing. Hallelujah. It's available there, but you will never step into it until you start growing. And the child grew and was strong in spirit. You can't dominate until you are strong in spirit, or else you'll be going to those who are who have worked strong in spirit. You remain a baby. When you grow into it, no devil can stop you. Everybody in the said they have grown into it. The Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 21. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his goods where he trusted, and then he divided his spoil. You can't take from him what is yours until you overcome him. You can't overcome him until you are strong in spirit. So it's not something you bypass. You want power, it's available. If you grow and was strong, I've been watching strong changing levels. So we say, My light has come. It's true growing. It won't come until you grow. You grow into the provision of redemption, sir. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13. For everyone that uses meek is unskillful in the word of righteousness. When I look back, I saw my investment in growing. And then without prayer, it's just a manifesting the provision of redemption so Naturally, for everyone, so we have a starting point too. Those when we are celebrating, they were there before. Now that you want to start, don't judge, don't look, don't compete with those who are at the end of it when you are starting. <laughs> start. <laughs> don't look at those who are at the end and you are starting to say you want to get that. Start, you get there. For everyone that uses that meek, they used meek before, but they have graduated through growing. It's unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meek belong to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to dissemble good and evil. Uh, chapter 6 of Hebrews, a continuation. Therefore, leaving the principles. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead doors or of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of baptism. That we will do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come for them to fall. It's impossible. Ash. It's a realm you grow into. Yes, Sir, I don't like people giving me things. I like growing into the thing that you have given me. <laughs> oh, 
you ever remain at the receiving end. But when you grow, you become a distributor. <laughs> Bako, Bakate, Kara, Kapus. I am not excited when anybody imparts to me the provisional redemption. I grow into it, then I stand on my own. <laughs> That's why this man laughs. Access to the provision of redemption through growth. And revelation is the fertilizer of the world that enhances your growth. <laughs> you know, everything is tied here. The second child that came and was given us the diverse definition of revelation. Revelation is light, revelation is this. You know what God has given me? Revelation is the fertilizer of the world that accelerates your growth. So if you are, that's why you have the Holy Spirit in your inside. He reveals to you, you just step into Christianity today because you are a regular attendant in the class. You have attended somebody who is there for 10 years. So it's not how long you have been in the church. Jesus Christ, my task, hunger for the world, day and night, made me to be looking for, at walls, looking for programs. A ministry, there's a program. I write it down. Anywhere I go, sideboard, I'm looking for programs. Four programs a day. I will time it. This one, they are starting five. I'll be there. Six. I'll be doing that. No program escapes me. Just the word. And I will time it in such a way that opening prayer, praise and worship, no. I'll time it. What time? What time? What time? Acceleration. Why? Revelation is the fertilizer. When I see the way my wife rear chickens with fertilizer, they grow overnight. I say, that so you also, you want to grow overnight? Make the Holy Ghost your teacher. Daily. I started long stride with revelation. But that's how I can make it. We do one month, two months. Da, da, da. No, sir. The, the fire has not gone down. If you had 60, I'm maintaining the spiritual stamina. Let me tell you what becomes of you when you have access to revelation. You know where you are going. Who know where they are coming? Command followership. <laughs> when you are in tune with the revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit, you naturally know where you are going. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Say, I know where I'm coming from and I know where I'm going. Nobody will confuse you. You won't escort any other person. In this world, you, are in, you either know where you're going or you're escorting others. Helping others realize their own goal at the expense of your own. When you know where you are going, you will be able to persuade others to go with you. Let me tell you the beauty of being word made or when you have access to revelation. You keep a cool head in an emergency. I'll be enjoying this. 
and I see it in the life of my fathers. What's making many anxious? They are cool. You know why? He will reveal to them things to come. So you have, you know the end of whatever. So you are calm. It makes you keep a cool head in an emergency. When people are running around, we are just calm. Oh, this guy calm. But he's showing you that things that others are not seeing. So you know, you know the outcome from the beginning. So you are cool. The beauty of having access to revelation is that you keep a cool head in an emergency. Hallelujah. I saw how my father, the apostle of it, kept a cool head when our mother in defeat was attacked. That was when he traveled the most. <laughs> That's not when to travel. But when you have assets, you maintain poise and calmness in the midst of danger. Look at Jesus Christ. Calm at all times. After this service, there is no news anywhere coming that will make you shake. Amen. <laughs> That's that's the benefit of being a partaker of the Holy Ghost and of the power of the world to come. And I've tasted the good word of God. And the, you can't taste the good word of God and anything is tasteful in the world for you. That's why Paul said, I count all things but dung. So what excites people? I don't say any excitement about it because I'm tasting of the heavenly gifts and the powers of the world to come. The good word of God. It is impossible for those whose eyes were enlightened to fall with others. It's not. After this service, everything about you shall remain standing. Yeah. You maintain calmness in the midst of excitement or anxiety. Scarcity of the economy. Here, what Paul said. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want you to leave here with this covenant that God has already shown you his own part. As for me, this is my covenant, my spirit that is now in you. And my words that are in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth. That means this is what you keep speaking. It doesn't matter. No matter what that situation, it will comport to what you are saying. Just keep dishing the word from your mouth. Sir, your greatest asset in this world is no money. It's the word of God in your mouth that produces money. <laughs> Word prosperity is superior to financial prosperity. Word. Word. Hosea chapter 14. Verse 2. Take you words and turn to the Lord. Not take you money. Take you words. And then that world will turn, the world will be turned to the currency you desire. <laughs> I'll be taking the water and then turn to the Lord. I certify you, brethren.
that the gospel which was preached of me was not after man. It's not after man. For I did I received it from one day, was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And profited in the Jews religion about many miracles in my own nation. Be more exceedingly zealous after the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's soul. And call me by his grace to reveal his son in me. After this service, God will reveal his son in you. Amen. That's the curriculum, the syllabus, the world. And you have the Holy Spirit there who is a revelator to reveal his son in me that my preaching among the hidden. Immediately I confound him with flesh and blood. We love confounding with flesh and blood when you have access. To the syllabus and the teacher, the Holy Ghost. Immediately I confirm with flesh and blood. We are here today celebrating Woga because immediately I confirm with flesh and blood. When you begin to run your business, your children, your career by the revelation of Jesus Christ, you dominate. Not by the economy of this nation, by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It, everywhere answers to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Sir, uh, I have never been choosing. I keep telling you about places. Because the revelation of Jesus Christ will create heaven wherever you are. There is no difference between Abuja and Dora. We are working in Revelation. You know, there's a change. The paradigm has shifted. Stop operating the old syllabus of things. In those days, in the industrial age, they celebrate things. But in this information age, or revelation age in the church, you celebrate people, not things. Breka, kara, ka, kaku, kate, kates. Let me tell you something. In case you are here, God has privileged you to be an employer. Don't celebrate the building and the machine. Celebrate the people that are working because they are the ones that have mind and can think. <laughs> That's why he said, Walker is the one that pitch. And everybody that comes here is a minister. Because we are the one that carries the mind of Christ. Not this beauty. Not these fans. So don't go and sit on people. Empower them. Because they have access to revelation. It's the Holy Ghost. He's interested in people. Not this. You can have a big building. You have all the machine. Celebrate the people that run the machine. Because the Holy Ghost will use them. Give them access. Not the machine or the building. Big time. I've given you tips now to blow your business. <laughs> you can buy the latest machine and move to a, the latest building. But if you don't pay attention to the ones that operate the machine, they are the ones that have the mind of Christ. Boy, you will be where you are. That's why in this place we are coming for the very first time. We celebrate you.
That's why in this place we are. The attention of the world is here. Yes, sir. Somebody just called me last night from London. He left here. He gave a testimony of how that he was. He got a better job in London. He has already prepared our website. Somebody just started a fellowship with us here last year. He gave us this definition of abundance. It's not him, it's the Holy Ghost. The fertilizer of the world that enhances your growth. In this kingdom, it's not how long you are. It's, are you attending the class daily? Are you doing your assignment? Are you going to your teacher? Book learning is not enough. You need a human teacher in the person of the Holy Ghost. And other human teachers before you who have gone ahead of I am enjoying worldwide work from human mentors. You are not here for a youth empowerment summit. You miss a class. We are, we are running a program. This is not a religious center. You must discern between spiritual, the school of the spirit and religion. You know what Paul said? I certify you, brethren. That means he has been certificated and convocated. He's now glorified. He has been attending the class. He didn't miss one class. When I tell you, you missed all the year you have. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I preach is not after man. That's why we're not after man may hear. For I neither received it of man, nor neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion. How beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jewish religion. Above many my equals. So it's possible to profit in the, in the religion. Above my equals. Well, he left that. He said, I can't hold his tongue. <laughs> the first that said he's probably he can't. When you begin to go through dust, cool of that spirit. What others celebrate, you just look like dog in your eyes. Now, let me tell you something. You are not alone. As you are sitting now you are with your body, your body harbors a lot of microorganisms that you can't see with your naked eyes. There are living organisms you are carrying when you bath, you put all kinds. You still carry them in their millions. Bacteria. No matter how many times you shower. They are, they are, they are, they are your natural habitat. Particularly under your pit and your groin. All over your body. You carry living organisms. Your saliva. You carry them. Your mouth. That's what the Bible says, stick to your wife. Because when you go to other women, 
you are you are just transferring what you carry and they are transferring to you. Don't know. You just complicate your issue. You see, the Bible is just true about everything. You don't know you carry organisms in your saliva. You so you go and now you kill someone that is not your wife, and then she has killed so many people too. So you just you transfer it. That's why I say stick to yourself. Don't you 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 have all things you don't know, and then you go and sleep with her. She transferred one she carries on her groin, armpit. You go, you, you just be transferred, and then she has met with and slept with many. And so you are just you don't know what you are carrying, adding complications. That's why you, it's revelation that will make you stay away from temptation of adultery. Ladies, you don't know where she's coming from. You don't know what she's carrying. You are spending, and then you are exchanging things, living organisms. You don't know. They are there in their millions. And uh, they are not harmful because it's their natural habitat. For some are even beneficial for you. But it becomes pathogenic when they leave their habitat and find themselves in another environment. That's when they become pathogenic. Because they are not the ones in your mouth now, they find themselves in your bloodstream. That's disease. It becomes disease when they leave their natural habitat. And then you are carrying, that's why you see, you leave your wife and then you go and then you are playing with another woman. In the morning, you just have swollen mouth. <laughs> so, I repeat, you know, it's what you shared. You don't know you are carrying things. Your body harbors this light. So, with this light now, everybody will stick to his own, two of us. So, it is light that disarms sin. When you have the Holy Ghost, He teaches you. So you don't struggle, you don't bind for the you just say, ah. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, flee fornication. Yeah. You can only flee fornication when light comes. <laughs> I have been able to stay away from bodily sin, sexual immorality, because of light. Because the person that the Holy Ghost is showing you, the, the devil is showing you, can't you see? All her parts. But he won't tell you how many people are running after her. He won't tell you what she's carrying. But when I, when you cuddle your wife or kiss your wife, the bacteria there, they are benign. You know, oh, this is her husband. So, <laughs> they know they are one. They, are, they, they, they dance to the word of God. And the two shall be one. So they say, oh. But when they meet strangers, say, this one, I uh, must turn. <laughs> then tomorrow you wake up with one kind of... So it's not by mistake when God says, hey, flee fornication. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He knows even the pathogens, the bacteria that they hear God's word. So this one is not his wife. Let's plague him. <laughs> That's why this man is free. By light. Year in, year out, our theme for the year is my light has come and dominion. Number one, it doesn't make economic sense. You'll be spending on her more than your wife. Two, and then she's giving you certain things that is a concern. If there's any person that will benefit from my table, it's my wife. My children. Not an outsider. Proverbs chapter 2. 
Verse 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the strange which flattered with her words. Which forsaken the guide of her youth. And forget the covenant of her God. It's my prayer for every class here that is not married. You will keep yourself. Amen. And the Lord will bring your woman your way. Amen. And you will stick with her all the days of your life. Amen. Uh, a week ago, I come on my voice to my bedroom. I said, you guys, won't you guys go to the shop and buy a card? I said, Father, uh, this is a card, greeting card for you. Congratulating you that all these years we've always seen you with your, our mother, not any other woman. <laughs> won't you guys give me a card like that? <laughs> I don't have to tell them they see it. They don't smoke because they, their father does not smoke. I know what will become of my children. Talk by the lifestyle of light. Yesterday I stepped down. My wife was in the living room. And one, one of the things was seated with her. I stretched my hands. Some of you that he was laughing. That's how he would do to his wife. Too. What he sees his father does to his wife. That's how you teach them without saying it. He saw it. I said, let's go. And she was locked. I said, let's go. Then I said, okay, let's make a prophetic around the table like the wall of Jericho so that whatever you desire, whatever is an obstacle shall come. Let's move around here seven times. We are move around seven times. And we are prophetically declaring for all members of uh, Woga, for Woga and our family that every obstacle before you shall come down. Light. My house is heaven. Light. My light. My house is more asu than asu rock. More asu than asu rock. More white than white house. Revelation. <laughs> it's because you don't have light. That's why you envy. You, you like what people have. You go to a house, you like their fridge, you don't like your own fridge. It's why you lack revelation. <laughs> revelation will make you like what you have, even if it's outdated, and then people will be wondering. <laughs> it will make you appreciate your wall room. And then when you go to somebody who has mansion, you intimidate yourself. Oh, I use my jalopy to intimidate people. My jalopy. I will never forget that jalopy. You see the letters car, I'll go and put it there. And I'll walk, I hit the tire, celebrating it. <laughs> people will be laughing. Light! Light. It will make all oh, these letters look cheap. That's how to celebrate God. Sir, so, let me tell you this. There is no place, no person can intimidate the man of light. When my father started the ministry in Kaduna and he went to America, a minister would go and told him, What are your needs? He said, We don't have needs. Me, we don't have needs on ground. Light will make you look cheap before any person. Stand to your feet. You need to know how I prepare to come to Woga. <laughs> When I'm driving from my house, every, I don't see anything. No. I don't see the letters you wear, the, the letters you drive, or the letters you are living. I just see destination. Woga. One of these culinary bliss. That's what it is. To come and see, anyone coming here is the best person in this world. Why did you do ah. Light. I want you to go back home. 
Maybe your bed is just six spring. And you can't even contain your leg. Your leg is outside. Just say, Father, I thank you. There is no bed like this. That's light. Light. The attitude of stepping into your car is the only car. Me. Light. You can't harass me with any letters. And in case you want to step into uh, shop right with your car, and somebody's home for him to clear off. Oof. Even if your own car is making sound, it doesn't matter. He's praising the Lord. <laughs> oh, just need positive meaning to anything that is disturbing. Hello. That's light. Woo. Hear this. Whatever thing is coming to you as a concern, read positive meaning to it. That's light. Yes, sir. Why? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting this. He will convert that thing, sir. To suit your test. Big time. Gloria, you catch it now. Uh -huh. Your wedding, your, your house is the best house. And the man God has given is the best. There is no version like him. Just carry that attitude. That's light. Your maker picked and hallowed and put her in the hall of faith. Rehab. Your case is not closed. As you live here this morning, whatever thing is said to be a concern to you turns into a celebration. Amen. You won't look at anything coming your way to weep anymore. Amen. Your only problem that is making that obstacle still face you is your attitude. That's why I said, let this mind be in you. It's just, it's your attitude. And your attitude is because there is no light. Yes. Sit down. <laughs> Two things. That will be seen in your life in this place, wealth and health. Amen. I can't hear you, amen. amen. God wants you ready and healthy. If you are wealthy, you are not healthy, you use your wealth to service your sickness. It's health that gives meaning to your wealth. The two go together. And it is God that is behind it. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy father as it is this day. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Verse 1. All the commandments which I command you, Jesus, shall you observe to do. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the who the Lord that goes from to the Father. And thou shalt remember all the way who the Lord that God laid these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandment or not. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna who is thou nourished to let thy father know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that man live. 
The Arameans works on the point, they needed their food, food sweat these 40 years. So God is interested in your wealth. Yes, sir. Can I hear you? God is interested in my wealth. God is interested in my wealth. And he's the one behind it. And he's the one behind it. He won't withhold it from me. He won't withhold it from me. I'm his child. I'm his child. I observe. Anytime this man comes to service, he has a song. The song wears what he wears. Even now, like this, is the same plot. White, white. That's a reflection of your father. Your father wants you to be like, wear what you wear. Have. It's his nature, sir. I observed, I'm a student. I watch people. Young boys, can you stand to your feet? Where are you? You see there? Stand up. You are an example today in our practical class. Stand to your feet. He's is he, wearing exactly what his father is wearing. Can you stand up, sir? After this service, you look like your heavenly father. Amen. Sit down. Practical class. That means his father wants him to. If it is so with the outer wear, it is so with every area of life. So, this guy is a minister of the sanctuary today. We are clearly for him. <laughs> a minister of the sanctuary, of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitch and not be. Can I just say, I shall be a reflection of my, who, my, who my father is? God is not stranded. My heavenly father is not stranded. My heavenly father is not stranded. I cannot be stranded. I cannot be stranded. In any way. In any way. Health wise. Health wise. Prosperity wise. Prosperity wise. I'll be a frontliner. I'll be a frontliner. After the order of my father. After the order of my father. I like the way he relates with his son. He moved here and then he went when Thursday. He was ch chatting with his son. <laughs> you people don't know that when I'm here, I watch everything I learn. I'm a learner. I don't know what instruction is passing to his son. That's how God wants to also pass instruction to you. Too many don't have this fatherhood relationship. That's why you go through Pastor Abel. That's Taiwan or Tukumbo. Go to your father's streets. That's where I take my own to. I can't stand here and point any person to me. And I'm not ashamed to tell any person standing here that I'm inadequate like you. <laughs> you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's dangerous for me to point anyone to me and not go. I want to be like God. Brother, I commend you to God. That's our language. When you see any person stand openly and talk to you, he can only tell you what he say openly, but you don't know what he's doing behind the scene. Only God knows what everybody is doing behind the scene. He knows what is in the secret of everybody. So follow that one. Who knows the secret of Abel? Not go after Abel. <laughs> the same thing. Be free here. There is no pressure here. Ah. Uh, at this phase of my life, is it now that I'll be cooking up things? <laughs> what do I need again? I don't need anything. I don't need anything. So that you can be free indeed. If I don't have food, I want to go down and sleep. He will give me sleep. But so he gives his beloved sleep. So I'll sleep. Oh, oh. To the next day, that means I avoid it. But the next day now, then he takes it. 
I was reading the life story of one soccer star from Mali. He had it rough when he was training as a child. Came from a poverty background. And then God just lifted him. He said, Star now. I don't know where he's playing. His name is Maez or what? He's swimming millions. And then he's wearing waterproof. He's watching. He said, Why? He said, No. He has built schools, hospitals. So what do I need? All oh, these uh, diamonds. And, uh, oh, it's just a blessing to his nation. I said, this guy, man, is wise. That's the new paradigm. Not the old. The old stands on this. The new is people. The old stands on control. But the new is empowerment. They don't control people. They empower people. This place is a place of empowerment. Yes, empowerment, sir. At our youth empowerment summit, the first speaker is a man sought after. This is a platform on our youth empowerment. It's a monthly thing now. Yes. Monthly thing. Monthly. Yes. Let me tell you this. You are here to be empowered, not to be controlled. And in case you are coming from where you control people, stop it. Empower them instead of controlling them. And see the returns. You see that will benefit. I received a phone call two weeks ago. After I went for evangelism. A young man comes. I know you won't know me, but 20 years in Sokoto. Your teaching so impacted me, impacted me that today I am comfortable. In his own words, so, sir, can you please send me your details? So, you see, instead of control, is empowerment. Now I'm benefiting from it. Go from here and begin to empower people, sir. Instead of competition, instead of the attitude of competition, have the attitude of collaboration. When you see somebody's business that is going ahead of you, don't compete. Collaborate with him. Say, well, how are you doing? How are you doing it now? Instead of competition, collaborate. That's the new parody. I like celebrating people who are ahead of you. When the speaker came here on Saturday, Friday was taught teaching. I said, this man, you need to go and see my library. I showed him my library and I went to my office. I showed him my mentors. Who my mentors? When I was here many years back, 2010, serving under my father, Bishop Abbey, I have his parchment. I go to Dunamis, I collect parchment. I draw for tables, no matter your age. Empowerment is not of competition, is collaboration. From anywhere. Two months ago, I told a pastor in Kenalan, get me all the teachings of the resident pastor. And he born it into one little something, 430 teachings. Instead of competition, collaboration. I beg, you wrestle. Instead of stability, change. Don't be stable where you are and the things you are saying, oh, it's okay. Before you know, you'll be going down. Embrace change. That's the new paradigm. Stand to your feet. The same old cutting, two years. The same arrangement of your bed. Eh, change it to another way so that when your friend comes in, ah, there's a change. You need to change. Just the duration of your bed or the setting. You change everything, but the same spot, the same change. Embrace change and see, just a little turn. It will have ripple effect. Ah. 
When you leave here, any shoe you are not using, give it out. You are creating space for a new one to come. Change. No matter how little it is. You are staying in a neighborhood and you, have, you, you know that Solomon, but you, 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 can't, you don't know his name. Abba. What's your name, sir? Change. Collaboration. Hallelujah. No competition. Yes, sir. That's the new pattern. That's the new model. Yes, it's a new day for you. Amen. You will return here with your testimonies. Amen. Now, hear this. You are crossing over into the month of September. God will remember you. Yeah. Of every good thing, my God will remember you. Yeah. Whatever thing has caused pain to you shall be turned to goodness. Yeah. You will enjoy wealth and health. Yeah. I read a pathetic story of a man, Stephen, 86 year old billionaire who just sealed a deal of selling his oil company. As soon as he just finished the deal, he just passed on. You will live long to eat the fruit of your neighbor. Do you know the redemptive name of God? Jehovah Rapha. That's his redemptive name. I am the Lord, thy healer. Rafa simply means it's, it's his nature and desire to heal you. No one here, whatever sickness you came in here with, drops here now. Yes. By revelation, my God will take it away. Yes. Watch it. Your weakness has returned to strength. Yes. Every negative Medical verdict on sending you is changed to positive. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. So I am the Lord thy God. If thou shalt do this in his sight. And shall give ear to his commandment all his statutes, then I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptian. For I am the Lord that he led thee. That's his redemptive name. From this hour, his redemptive name shall answer in your life. Amen. As you turn your back, you are turning your back on stagnation, Amen. on failure, Amen. on sickness. Amen. You'll be face to face with success. Amen. Face to face with open doors. Amen. This week, your life shall shine. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. And congratulations. I want everyone here who has to prophetically step into the month of September. It's a prophetic entrance into a month of color. Don't come alone, come with families. Not just family, families. There's going to be an eruption of distribution of heavenly gifts by the word. Prophetic blessings, impartation of prophetic blessings that will make you become stable and begin to radiate all the provisions of redemptions that Jesus paid for. Don't miss it in any way. Congratulations. You are here this morning, you are not born again, wherever you are. Pick up whatever you came with and rush to the altar. I want to believe everyone is born again. If so, lift up your hands. Lord, for every lifted hand here, I decree glorious crossover. Amen. Every form of accident is removed out of the way. Amen. No evil report. Amen. Our, our children are kept by your power. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I speak head to your body. Amen. Supernatural liftings upon the work of your hands. Amen. Nothing shall cut short your days. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. And congratulations. And congratulations.
in Jesus mighty name shall we share the goodness without him nothing was made that has been made